Okay, conservator, can you hear me? We're back. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Please tell me you can hear me. Got you now. Yes, you can hear me. Great. Okay. Apologies for that. I have no idea what happened. Um, is your voice there? Yes. Good. Okay. Yes, Max. Great. Okay. How long did you carry on talking yourself before you realized? I had no idea. <laughs> I was blabbing away and then I realized uh, I saw re reconnecting, reconnecting. I was like, no. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, new stream. Uh, apologies to everyone for that. Um I had some sort of internet connection problem, a uh, hamster problem. Um, I got sound great. Okay, we can you can hear me. Welcome back to everyone. <laughs> um, please smash the like button once again. Uh, this is extremely embarrassing because it's. I feel like I'm responsible for it, but uh, I'm not, unfortunately. Um, but it's. Uh, <laughs> it may have been the swearing. Yes. <laughs> the stream went no okay we can't we can't tolerate this type of this type of language so for some reason i got transferred to a phil video hey phil is stealing stealing my views <laughs> um i think you broke youtube but this is where maybe that's the case leave a message after the beep <laughs> welcome back welcome back to everyone okay we're up to 40 42 viewers smash the like button um Switched over to a James O'Brien video. <laughs> Retire the hamsters. Yes, the hamsters need to be retired at some stage. Uh, th thanks for coming. In. Thanks for coming back, everyone. So, as people are coming in, I show you our our break video. So, enjoy. Megan, you're a bitch. You're a bad snitch. Heard you bully staff. Oops, I just told the telegraph. You've got jewels on your ears. I'm gonna tell peers. And the sweaty one on talk radio cheers. Singing one wheel, one wheel, rock you. One wheel, one wheel, rock you. Harry, you're a dumb boy. Silly boy, your wife is a dud. She could never be royal blood, if you know what I mean. Winky-faced queen. Frankly, I'd rather you were friends with Epstein. One will, one will rock you. Sing it. One will, one will rock you. Harry, you have married badly. Philip's killed over. Look what you've bloody done. She's got jewels on her face. A Saudi embrace. MBS told me when he came to my place. One will, one will rock you sing it one will one will rock you everybody one will one will rock you ah one will one will rock you <laughs> fantastic one will rock you <laughs> and that's the ian duncan smiths do rec i recommend checking them out okay so as we know the the chancellor uh welcome back everyone sorry for the previous uh, internet problems beyond my control it's the hamsters the hamsters went on strike it wasn't the nhs going on strike it was the hamsters i <laughs> didn't have the queen so hairy. <laughs> you know it's been a long winter <laughs> um Good to see you, Nick. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the stream, the stream number two. So, as we know, in the in the budget, um, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak decided to hand over a lot of cash and a lot of um, resources to Tory-backed regions and uh, councils. So, I want to show you this report from Channel Four News about this. Leveling up. It's the election promise that has echoed through the left behind areas of the UK and yesterday the Chancellor finally coughed up. I'm launching the first round of the levelling up fund today, inviting applications from local areas across the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. 
but less than 24 hours later, the Prime Minister was forced to sail to his rescue after allegations that the cash is being spent disproportionately in conservative areas. I, I... Is this a surprise? You need to give the you need to give the hamsters more than one percent food rise. Well said, Archimus. I'll increase it to maybe fifty percent. Then I should never have any more problems. Um, yeah, like let's give money. This is just an, another case of let's give money to the conservative areas so that those areas continue to vote conservative. But at the same time, let's cut services and cut funding to labor areas um so as to drive more people towards the conservative towards their voting conservative because if everything is going shit in sorry everything is going badly <laughs> in the labor areas then people will naturally decide ah let's go and join um let's vote f let's vote tory let's vote boris I've asked about this and the, the, I, I'm told that the, the criteria are entirely objective and they look at uh, all sorts of... Well, if Boris Johnson says the criteria is objective, well, the, you know, Boris Johnson would never lie. Uh, uh, data, poverty, uh, employment, uh, and so on. This is one of the things about the European Union, and I've talked about this before. The European Union invests money where it's needed not where there are votes. Politicians in countries, it's not just the UK, everywhere, will invest money where there are votes. So if they believe we, we can win seats in this area, then we'll invest money in that area. It's not because they care about the people in the area. They want to convince the people to vote for them. If there's no one going to vote for them in that area, then they're not going to invest in money in that area. But if there's a chance that they can flip seats, they're going to invest money there. That's the great thing about the European Union. They would spend money on areas that are needed. And what's tragic is that some of the areas that have received the most funding from the European Union, like Wales, for example, voted to leave. I remember um, Channel 4 News, I think it was, or Sky News, doing a report last year about this, where there was a council in Wales that voted to leave, and they had received money for... Um, the town council being upgraded, they had received money for jobs for young people, repairing cars and stuff like that. That money's gone now. They voted to get rid of that money. But that was money spent not to create, you know, to win votes. It was spent there because it was needed there. This is Richmond in North Yorkshire, a market town and a tourist hotspot and especially when you compare it to other places around here, it's far from deprived. And yet yesterday it was ranked priority one, top of the list, to get access to a 4.8 billion levelling up fund. That was announced in the budget by the Chancellor, who is also the MP for Richmond. Oh! <laughs> so, so the Chancellor is taking taxpayer money and handing it over to his constituency. That's perfectly reasonable, of course. On the government's own scale of deprivation, with one as the most deprived, Richmond is 450 out of 533. So one is the most deprived. This is very far from being deprived, but they're receiving money. I don't know what would you what would you call this cronyism not cap, not um not corruption but cronyism 80 miles south in Sheffield there are some areas that go as low as 12 on that scale and yet they've been classified as priority 2 for the leveling up fund the Sheffield city region mayor wants to know why it's I can tell him why because you're not kissing the chancellor's arse or you're not a tory nakedly political we urgently need some transparency from the chancellor about the decision making process i don't think by any independent fair metric that can be the right approach and i want the chancellor to clarify as a matter of urgency but back in richmond their priority one status was well received do you think that's I've fair got, well yeah it lives here uh... <laughs> he lives here you're not supposed to say that, <laughs> but at least he's been honest. <laughs> he says, yeah, he's laughing about it. 
he know he understands its crone its cronyism you know the chancellor is from here he's pumping money in here because he doesn't want he's he's regarding this area as deprived so the, at least this guy understands how things how things operate I, think that's why I would do exactly it. the same. Do you think it's one of the most deprived places? No, I don't know. So yeah. do you think it's a good thing? <laughs> no, we don't have you know um, drug uh, drug dealers on every corner. We don't have um, you know kids stealing cars and driving them up and down the street. We don't have um, mass graffiti. We don't have mass unemployment. It seems um, seems quite a reasonable. You know, upper middle or upper middle class town. Thing that Rishi Sunak has put Richmond. Yeah, yeah. Top yeah, of the list. Yeah, bless him. <laughs> For years, in fact, governments have left the rural areas behind. I think it's great to have a chancellor that recognises the rural plight. And and when I say rural, I don't just mean Richmondshire. I mean the rural plight throughout throughout the the country. Um, be, because that levelling up was required. And it isn't just the levelling up fund that is under fire. More cash from the town's fund was dished out yesterday to mostly Tory areas. Rishi Sunak used his budget to confirm extra spending in a string of towns across England. He said the funds were to rebalance economic investment. Hmm, a lot of blue there. <laughs> Not so much red, is there? Of course, anywhere there is red, it's it's surrounded by blue. You know, there aren't many red islands, are there? Um, it's got a red telephone box. Must be loaded. <laughs> James, thank you so much for that hot dog. Very kind of you. Very kind of you for that hot dog. <laughs> He's giving more than £1 billion to 45 towns. But of the 56 constituencies which will benefit from these grants, 47 are Conservative, only nine are Labour. Now, can you imagine if the Labour Party... Imagine if Jeremy Corbyn was Prime Minister and he had done something like this. The newspapers would go ape crap over it. There would be calls for him to resign. There would be calls for... This is cronyism from the Conservative Party. And we're hearing very little from the Labour Party. One of those seats is Newark, where the MP is Community Secretary Robert Jenrick. In a statement today, his department said he had nothing to do with the decision. But what we saw yesterday was an announcement for funding allocated and no accompanying um, release of documents or announcements of how that decision making was actually carried um, carried out. And it isn't right to reduce people's future prosperity to electoral politics. And also, these are Brexiteers. They have already decided to make parts of the country poorer and throw young people under the bus. So this is sort of expected. The government has insisted the methodology is clear and fair. The bidding process for the first round of the levelling up fund will run until mid-June. Well, I've been... So, I just found out there was a new stream. Uh, apologies for that, Kevin Ladd. Um, I had some internet connection problems before. So this levelling up is just a, a pile of crap. Um, but, you know, Boris... It's about cronyism. It's about protecting Tories. It's always been about that. The, the function of government is to protect the Conservative Party. It's to defend them, to protect them from criticism and scrutiny. That's what it's about. It's not about looking after people. It's not about improving the lives of ordinary people and making business um, work better so they can employ more people or... Um, develop, help the nation. No, it's not about that. The function of government is to protect the Conservative Party. That's what it's always been about. So I want to show you this article from um, The National in Scotland. It says here, Union, Unionist journalist says Boris Johnson's lying is a threat to politics. Boris Johnson's habitual lies will lead to a total collapse of trust and crisis in politics, an author has warned. Peter Osborne um, has set out um, a series of misleading statements made by the Prime Minister in the House of Commons, including about the SNP, which he has um, which he has sent 
to party leaders. The journalist, who was once hired by Johnson uh, when the Prime Minister was editor of the Spectator magazine, compiled the dossier for a new book which he argues which he argue, uh, sorry, argues that um, the lying from his former boss is on a scale never seen in politics before. It was, you know, it's typical of Boris Johnson to lie. We've been hearing about his lies on a continuous basis. He's, he lies so much now that when he does tell the truth, we automatically imagine it's a lie. That's how bad it is. If Boris Johnson said today is Friday, well, here in Italy it's no longer Friday. <laughs> it's a bad example. Where in the month of March, I'd have to check the calendar. I would assume that it's not the month of March. I'd have to check. Maybe it's February. Because if he says it's March, it can't be March. Um, Osborne, who was also formerly a Daily Mail columnist and chief uh, political commentator of the, the Daily Telegraph, told the Sunday National, the British Prime Minister is a serious job. The Prime Minister has the power to declare war or handle national emergencies as we, uh, as we, sorry, ask us to make sacrifices. I don't know how people can possibly trust uh, Mr. Johnson to deal with these serious issues, given he is a serial and habitual liar. For instance, he said in Parliament in 2020, the SNP had not had a debate in its Parliament on education for two years. In fact, it has had six debates about schools, endless discussions in this Scottish Parliament. It's about deflecting. See, Boris Johnson knows that um, his supporters will believe whatever he says. It's like Trump. Trump will say something. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. It doesn't matter how absurd it is. His supporters will believe it. And I think this is damaging to politics. It is damaging to the reputation of the country as well. Like Boris Johnson has made threats, you know, I'm going to invoke Article 16. But the threat has has got to a stage where we don't believe he's going to do that because he's a compulsive liar. But risk saying something like, I'm going to... It, 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 like. Let me make a comparison. If if Boris Johnson said, we're going to go to war with France, people would think, okay, it's absurd. But it would be a serious thing for a prime minister to say. His supporters would believe it, I think. <laughs> or maybe they're so, you know, so within the bubble, they would say, yeah, let's go to war with France. And then the next day he'd say, no, we're not going to war with France. And they'd, yeah, no, no, it's a good idea not to go to war with France. Is that the 12,000 new members? <laughs> we have 12,000 subscribers. Yes. Um, but it is damaging because he, he creates a scenario where lying becomes normal, where it's no longer a problem to lie. You know, it's it's normal behavior. We, we normally understand that politicians lie, but it's generally around the time of an, an election they say I'm going to spend more on education and they don't spend more on education I'm going to do X and they don't do X but it doesn't become something that's on an everyday basis Boris Johnson lies on a daily basis and he gets away with it and that's one of the problems I have with what's happening in um, in regards to uh, the likes of Brexit or or uh, the pandemic because it, these lies have serious consequences and it creates a scenario where anyone can lie and they will not be punished and I've talked about it when he's in parliament where he lies and he's not held accountable for it where the you know the speaker of the house I understand the speaker of the house has has limited powers but can they not intervene <clears throat> and say I'm sorry um, do you want another go at answering that question he doesn't have to, the Speaker of the House doesn't have to say, um, Prime Minister, you didn't answer the question. Just, you know, hint. Hint and say, Prime Minister, do you want to try another time to answer that question? What was the... Um, Keir Starmer, can you repeat the question? Maybe the Prime Minister didn't hear it. He could do something like that. He has the power to do that. I'm, I know he doesn't hold the Prime Minister to account. He can't say, you didn't answer the question, you need to answer the question. He can't force him to answer the question, but he can insist that he 
listens to the question and responds to the question. I, I think he, he does have that power at least. You know. Uh, or the speaker is just on the same side. That's, that's probably the, the reality, uh, James. The this, this speaker doesn't care. Or he's on the same side as Boris Johnson. Or he's afraid, mm, I better not put too much pressure on the on the Prime Minister or I'm going to you know, be called to the to the office or something. <laughs> it shouldn't really be the case because you should have, in a sense, in the chamber, you should have more power than the Prime Minister. Um, okay, I want to move on, guys. Um, as we're on the issue of Scotland, I want to remain on the issue of Scotland for a moment. I want to show you... Um, <laughs> Those who've been getting in touch this morning on... So this is very interesting because, as we know, Nicola Sturgeon um, gave her evidence at the hearing last week, this week, and um, she came out pretty well. Now, the Scottish Conservatives made a bit of a mistake. They asked, they called for her resignation before she gave evidence, which I think was a ridiculous uh, thing to do because how can someone... How would you expect someone to resign before they gave evidence at the committee or at the hearing? Um, so you're going to hear the leader, Douglas Ross, who's the leader of the uh, Conservative Party in Scotland, about this inquiry. I mean, uh, one of those who've been getting in touch this morning on Twitter, and there have been quite a lot whenever Scottish politics comes up, my, my Twitter mentions seem to come alive for some reason. Can you ask Douglas Ross this? Why does a woman need to apologise for a man's actions in terms of Nicola Sturgeon? Uh, being asked to apologise uh, for, for, for Alex Salmon. But then again, you know, <laughs> but Matt Hancock isn't held to the same kind of level of accountability. Why is Matt Hancock not held to any level of accountability? Not the same level of, of accountability. Matt Hancock doesn't have to answer any questions. Or Boris Johnson doesn't have to answer any questions. Well, Murdo Fraser was looking at the Scottish government and the mistakes made by the Scottish government, which Nicola Sturgeon leads. Uh, so, so it's just so it's only when the Scottish government do something bad, or in your eyes, that they need to be held accountable. So, if Westminster do does anything bad, that's okay. He's just playing party politics here. When my when my team does something bad, I stay silent. When the other team do something bad, I make a ruckus. Mistakes that have cost over five hundred thousand pounds, and of course we now know <laughs> five hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> okay, why was she pursuing this? According to her, because she saw a situation where two female um, uh, supporters or members of the party—I don't remember—were being um, assaulted in a way by a former leader. It seems. Allegedly. Uh, I have to be careful what I say. And and she pursued this. She continued, she spent money in order to get this uh, sorted out. Maybe sorted out isn't the right word. Um, she pursued it in the courts. And it may have come out that it wasn't the right thing to do. But... That's, I, I don't know, but he, he's complaining about £500,000 spent on this court case or on this uh, trial or whatever, this investigation. Um, £500,000. I'm not saying that £500,000 is not important, but we've just heard about how Boris Johnson, like, I still have it open. £37 billion pounds on a failed track and trace system, nine and a half billion pounds estimated cost of Brexit, 340,000 pounds payout to Pretty Patel for Pretty Patel's bullying. Like, why did the taxpayer have to pay for that? Why didn't she pay it? It was bullying. She was found guilty of bullying. Actually, no, it was an out of course settlement. A hundred thousand pounds for redecorating of number 10 flat. 
that one of the complainants who went to the Scottish Government to raise serious allegations against Alex Salmond, her details were shared with his team and we got no further forward in terms of finding out how that despicable act was allowed to happen yesterday. So so you're going to continue until you find out who, who leaked the information? Women are at the heart of this, and for their uh, benefit, we need to get to the bottom of this and the truth. And we didn't get any closer to that yesterday with Nicola Sturgeon's evidence. And so, so what is, then, uh, the next move for opposition parties in Scotland? The no-confidence vote's going nowhere. Well, our no-confidence vote in John Swinney remains because although they have released some of the legal advice, they wrote to the committee uh, very quickly after Nicola Sturgeon finished an eight-hour evidence session yesterday offering more evidence, and they will release more documents this week, so we will look at that. And we have lodged the motion of no-confidence in Nicola Sturgeon because the evidence is clear, it's damning, she's missing. OK, but I don't think you're going to win a vote of no-confidence in Nicola Sturgeon. I think it actually works in both ways against the Conservatives and the Labour Party in Scotland. Because if they won a vote of no confidence, um, the SNP would be would see this as her being kicked out for political reasons. Not because of what she did, but because they want to get rid of her. They want to undermine the SNP. But, uh, but also if they fail, it will strengthen her position. It's the wrong, the wrong approach here. This is the wrong issue to raise. If if Nicola Sturgeon was pocketing money for you know a, a bridge or something, there was money to build a bridge to Northern Ireland. Nicola Sturgeon suggested <laughs> and she was putting money you know into the Cayman Islands or something. That would be something that you could push. But the fact that she was in a the way the public see this is she opened an investigation on the former leader because he was abusing his position. And he was abusing his position with women. That's how the public see it. Was it right to spend this money? We don't know. Or maybe it was or maybe it was not. But that's how the public see it. You can't get... Like, you're, you're fighting on the wrong hill here, Douglas. You're fighting on... You're fighting a battle that you shouldn't be in this battle. <laughs> this is the wrong battle to be having. <laughs> um, Bogdan, thank you so much for that super chat. Hi, Max. I saw you had equipment problems. <laughs> yes, apologies for that. I hope the stream has finished the other one. Um, hope it's still not running. Uh, <laughs> or you two will, will be very angry. Um, but I'm back. I, and we're getting close to the end of the stream for tonight. So I want to say thanks for that super chat as well. Thanks to everyone who sent the super chats as well. But the Conservatives are not in a position to win any battles here. This is the wrong fight, I think. And they're, I think they're, they're attempting to throw anything they can against the wall, hoping it will stick. But this is, it's not going to work. I, I thought she would come out of this somewhat damaged, but she hasn't. Nicola Sturgeon has come out of this smelling of flowers. Um, and you can see there is the the support for the SNP has increased. Now, support for independence is, I think, narrowing as we get closer to the the election. But if the SNP win, three hundred and eight watching, fantastic! Smash that like button. Um, your stream on YouTube, uh, it's dead, Max. No worries. Cool. Okay. Um, no talk about Northern Ireland. I hadn't. Uh, no talk about Northern Ireland. No, uh, because uh, the NHS issue dominated everything, and I didn't get a chance to talk about Northern Ireland. When we're we're almost at the end, um, we can fit this in just before we finish. Um, let me paste this in. It's about. It, I wanted to also talk about Northern Ireland, but I, I will. <laughs> I will fit it in somehow. We can leave Scotland for now. But I think going forward, Nicola Sturgeon is probably in a better position than she was before. So Ireland Foster accuses EU of inflexibility over Northern Ireland. Uh, I'll do it later. Um, Ireland Foster, first minister of uh, and leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, has accused the EU of belligerence and inflexibility in its application of post Brexit arrangements for the region this is the typical response uh, no UBI <laughs> I'm sorry guys it's the 
the NHS issue dominated the stream. I, I will cover UBI next time, I promise. Um, this is the typical response. This is the typical tool the DUP are using. Blame everyone else. The, D the EU never voted for Brexit. The EU never wanted Brexit. Um, the government in Ireland didn't want Brexit. They didn't vote for Brexit. Now your thing is dead. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Max. <laughs> the stream is dead. Um, the EU Commission has disrupt, um, sorry, was disrupting supply chains and damaging the Good Friday Agreement through a disproportionate application of the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, the part of the Brexit deal that keeps the region in its blocks single market, she said on Friday. You know, it's interesting that the DUP never supported the D the Good Friday Agreement until now. Now they care about the Good Friday Agreement. They have taken a very belligerent approach to the difficulties that the, the protocol has caused for Northern, not the protocol, Brexit. I wish I could actually speak to directly to Eileen Foster. I've, I've written to her on Twitter <laughs> from time to time and said, no, it's not the protocol, it's Brexit. I have to be careful because these people just block me. If I say something they don't like, they just block you. Um, I'd like to actually speak to Eileen Foster directly and say, I'm sorry, Eileen, it's not the protocol. It's Brexit. Maybe somebody needs to tell you that. The journalists won't tell you that. Somebody needs to tell you that. Somebody needs to stop her, you know, disrupt her narrative. Her narrative is always the protocol, the protocol, the protocol is the problem. No, it's Brexit that's the problem. The number of checks which are uh, occurring between Great Britain and Northern Ireland are so disproportionate uh, to the risk the EU single market that has become completely out of step with what uh, the protocol was meant to do. So she's saying that there's too many checks taking place. This was not necessary. You wanted this. You can't complain about it now. You wanted this. There was an opportunity to avoid all of this, but you didn't want it. This is the consequence. We said about, we talked about this. We complained, we, 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 um, we predicted these types of problems. But Brexit here said, no, 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 Project Fear, Project Fear, um, Northern Ireland has been used as a tool, is used as a bargaining chip, there, there will be no problems, Brexit is not a problem, there will be no problems, and now we're seeing the problems. Her comments were the latest salvo in the DUP campaign to dilute or ditch the protocol, which requires checks on goods coming from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. And of course, the DUP are typical, no, 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 no. And if you ask them, okay, what would you present as an alternative? No, 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 no. That's the DUP response to everything. No, no, no. That's all they. That's all they have. They have no. They have nothing to present as an alternative. Because they're afraid to say what they truly want. They, what they truly want is a border on the island of Ireland. So they'll say we need to protect the Good Friday Agreement. But we want a border on the island of Ireland. Um, well, those two things are not compatible. They came amid an escalating row between the British government and Brussels, which said it would uh, launch legal action following a move this week by the UK to unilaterally de um, delay implementation of part of the protocol. The DUP and other in, um, unionist parties are angry with Boris Johnson for signing up to the protocol, but they, uh, but they back his attempt to extend a series of grace periods to ease disruption of food supplies and parcel deliveries. Um, Max, you can always tweet Paul Merton. <laughs> uh, they are one. I love Paul Merton. Paul Merton rocks. Thanks for that super chat. The protocol was meant to do two things. It was meant to protect the single market of the European Union and it was meant to protect the Good Friday, the Belfast Agreement. And frank, frankly, it is di disproportionately doing one and damaging the other. She has no evidence to, to support this. How is it damaging the Good Friday Agreement? There's nothing in the Good Friday Agreement about a border in the Irish Sea. Nothing. There's a, there are lots of references to a border on the island of Ireland border posts on the island of Ireland. Nothing about a border in the Irish Sea. So she's lying. Again. The European Parliament responded 
uh, to Downing Street's unilateral um, announcement by taking steps to formally uh, to delay formal ratification of the of the wider Brexit trade and cooperation agreement. This is a this is concerning because we need to have this ratified. This needs to be signed off on. Um, otherwise, we're going to start to see a trade war, perhaps, and that's not going to help either side. But we have to have this, these checks in place. The single market has to be protected. The European Union are well within their rights to protect the single market. They didn't want the UK to leave. There was an option to, to allow the UK, both Great Britain and Northern Ireland, to remain part of the single market and the custom union, and, they didn't, and the Brexiteers didn't want that. There was nothing on the ballot paper in 2016 that said, leaving the single market and the customs union. So it was never a requirement of Brexit. It was a requirement of some Brexiteers later on, but it was never a requirement of Brexit. Brexit was about no longer being a member of the European Union. There was nothing in it, in a, nothing on the ballot paper that said, Let, we're leaving the single market and the customs union as well. Tick, yes. Nothing. This was added on after. So it was never a requirement to have um, Northern Ireland as part of the single market and the customs union and Great Britain not. Brussels, uh, she goes on to say, the, oh, sorry, the DUP we uh, Westminster leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, I just call him Geoffrey, not going to call him Sir, he doesn't deserve that, <laughs> along with, um, uh, oh, what was his name? Ja uh, Jimmy Savile, don't call him Sir, doesn't deserve it said it showed the EU's desire to punish the UK regardless of the impact on Northern Ireland. Brussels is selfishly intent on using Northern Ireland as a bargaining chip. Yeah, yeah, Brussels is doing that. The UK government uh, was wrong to agree to the protocol and failed to see the impure, impure motivations of the EU. Once again, she doesn't, doesn't provide any alternatives. Um, just get rid of it. Um, will Frost, with Frost in charge, things will surely be chilling. You know, I, I, d I don't have much respect for Michael Gove, but at least Michael Gove is not an idiot. Michael Gove understands, yeah, w there are things we need to do. Thanks for that, um, Super Jet Bogdan. Um, Max, what's the chance of the EU putting a border between Ireland instead? I really hope we don't go to that, but there is a risk of that. Um, because this... Every other part, uh, every other part of the European Union that borders a third country has a border. Border checks. They have to be put in place to protect the single market. Like the European Union would ha says, we need to protect the single market. That's uh, that's acceptable. But it may be forced to put a border on the island of Ireland. I hope that doesn't happen. But it will be forced by the British government and it will be forced by the DUP. Uh, Sammy Wilson and his call for guerrilla warfare didn't help. No, he did not. Sammy Wilson is a friggin' idiot. Penfold is worse than, the, than an idiot. He's sly. Uh, we're the EU as childish and reckless as Whitehall. They would throw Ireland under bus. Yes, but they're not. <laughs> Michael Gove has a serious substance problem a big secret <laughs> not that big of a secret <laughs> it's quite well known um, let the unionist mi militia rearm and then send the military to Belfast uh, um, EU border war great so the UK wins free trade agreement and Ireland uh, and Irish president of the United uh, Irish American president of the United States yes um, I don't see it going in that direction. I, I think this is just a bit of saber-rattling, um, a distraction. Boris Johnson needs to show that he's doing something, but he's not. And he say, yeah, yeah, we're going to extend these grace periods. I, I think, I actually think, uh, at the end, it, this is an attempt to extend the grace periods uh, through brute force. Sort of, maybe through the negotiations, the negotiations in it, 
regarding extending the, the, the grace peers weren't going very well. So the British government's response is, OK, let's unilaterally extend them. This will bring the EU back to the negotiating table. And the EU will say, um, what the hell are you doing? OK, instead of creating, you know, maybe it will work. It might work as a tactic. Threaten um, to throw yourself <laughs> under a bus and somebody will come along and help you, you know, stop you from doing that. Um Loyalists withdraw their support for Good Friday Agreement and brought themselves back uh, to prison. It's really stupid what the loyalists are doing as well. Because they're not creating... Because there's no long-term benefit for them in this. I, I think it will drive unionists... I think it will drive a wedge in unionism. There'll be unionists who say, look, we don't want this. We don't support this. Um, and there'll be others who say, we need to go back to war. Um, generally, during the, the 70s and the 80s, the majority of the Union, there was a bigger split in Northern Ireland between unionism and nationalism, Catholics and Protestants. Now it, that split is is gone. People are much more united. And if there's someone on the fringe who's trying to create problems, they will be marginalised. So I don't see this working to the benefit of the uni of the um, the loyalist community, the loyalist uh, paramilitaries. They're they're going to try and cause damage. They probably will, but the the level of support that they have in Northern Ireland, I think, has is greatly diminished. And I think a lot of the activities they've been carrying out over the last number of years have been just uh, related to organised crime. So they're not even so much a political organisation, more a criminal syndicate. Um, Aki, thank you so much for that super chat. <laughs> Mankini party payoff. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> no, man no mankinis tonight. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for that super chat. So, guys, I want to say thank you to everyone who's come on the stream, the second stream as well. Um, apologies for the connection issues. I, it's, it hasn't happened in six months, I think. Uh, I don't know what happened tonight. It seems to be everything's back to normal again. I um, want to say thank you to everyone who sent a super chat. Greatly appreciated. Uh, and apologies for my language at the beginning, beginning of the stream, the beginning of the previous stream. Uh, I just, I, I lost it um, because I see people working hard to save lives in the NHS. I see them being undervalued. I see the Tories taking advantage, claiming victory when with their rollout of the vaccine when they are not the ones doing it. It's the NHS that are doing it. And I, I, I just lose it. These people are working hard. They deserve not claps. They deserve a decent level of pay. Much more than any politician. And um, the, the way they're treated by these crooks and cronies and, and charlatans pisses me off. And I, and I lose it from time to time. <clears throat> okay, um, connection issues hasn't happened in six months <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's happened in six months thanks thanks but um over the last number of months they the the streams have been going quite well i think there weren't too many issues um so so thanks everyone for coming on the stream and the second one uh thanks to everyone who sent a super chat greatly appreciated as always um, and a big thank you to uh, the moderators, also the new moderator. We have a few new moderators. I want to say welcome and thanks to them too. So guys, um, have a great weekend. Um, let's hope that the NHS staff get some movement on this and get the, the money they deserve. Um, I, I, if, I think they should take... Um, uh, they should go on strike they should take um, action against the government and go on strike because they deserve everything that they that they demand so I will see you all next Tuesday at the same bat time same bat channel but before we go remember we have our one for the road so I'll just bring that up uh, copy this link
Hopefully there aren't any connection problems again. Okay. Question and it's a question that nobody's and it's a question that nobody's actually being answered here. But you're not asking a question. What you're doing is, is you're giving your opinion of your version of the events. Do you have a question? I do have a question. I heard for somebody that she said that I know that she said. See, that's not actually a question. What you're doing is, is you're just repeating something you've heard, and it's no one a question. It's just your opinion. Oh, for Listen to me. Sake, what I is heard she's that she asking? never said what she was Nobody supposed to have said. Again, that is not actually a question. You're just repeating the same. I'm trying to tell you. She I, I, said I something and I never heard me. if she... Look, do you actually have a question? Not just your version of the events. If you want, What's you can ask the happened? First Minister a question. Not just well, kicking over the thing that you've said before. No. I, that, I, I don't even know what she's asking me anymore. To be honest, my head's puggled with a lot of it. <laughs> Uh, I actually remember that they were arguing. <laughs> the two people were arguing in the in the chamber, <laughs> like, you know, stop wasting time. <laughs> okay, so guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you all next Tuesday. Remember, if you want to support the channel further, you can become a patron and you have access to Discord. And I'll see some of you on Discord after the stream. Um, the others, you can support the channel by sharing videos on social media. I, I saw many people are sharing the videos on Facebook, for example, and other social media platforms. That's a great way to support the channel as well. Um, so, gr guys, have a great weekend. Stay safe. And as Boris Johnson always says, stay alert. I'll see you next Tuesday. Same by time, same by channel at 9.30 GMT. Take care and I'll see you soon. Good night.